This video is brought to you by Imprint. Labour are in a tight spot over the upcoming budget. They've promised to reverse Conservative austerity, but the current finances already have a £22 billion black hole, while Labour's self-imposed fiscal rules rule out more borrowing, and their campaign pledges rule out the vast majority of tax rises. However, even if it's hard to see how they can find £22 billion by raising existing taxes, they might have some more luck by creating some entirely new ones. So in this video, we're going to look at some unorthodox ways that Labour could raise some extra cash, including a wealth tax, a weed tax, and a stealthy bank tax. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop when we release new videos. But let's start with the wealth tax. At first glance, a wealth tax sounds eminently sensible. There's a lot of wealth in the UK. It's appallingly unevenly distributed and it's a very popular policy. Nearly 80% of Brits support a wealth tax on people with assets worth over 10 million pounds. And every time we do a video on this topic, we get a whole load of comments saying we should just do a wealth tax. Unfortunately though, they just don't have a great record. According to the OECD, wealth taxes are usually far harder to administer and bring in far less money than expected, which is why they've become less popular over the past few decades. In 1990, for instance, 12 OECD countries had some sort of tax on net wealth, but that number had fallen in 2017. There are a number of reasons why wealth taxes don't work as well as you might expect. For starters, measuring wealth is far more difficult than measuring income, and the super rich often find ways to hide or undervalue their assets. Secondly, to make any wealth tax politically palatable, you have to have exemptions, and these are usually ruthlessly exploited. In the UK context, a wealth tax would also discourage saving, which is already pretty low by international standards, and something that many people feel morally uneasy about. However, in 2020, a report from the Wealth Tax Commission found that while a bog-standard annual recurring net wealth tax wouldn't be all that effective in the UK, a one-off surprise wealth tax could work. According to the report, after accounting for non-compliance and administration costs, a one-off wealth tax payable on all individual wealth above £500,000 and charged at 1% would raise about £260 billion, whilst a similar tax for only those with more than £2 million in assets would raise about £80 billion. There are a number of advantages to a one-off tax. If it's done without warning, rich people won't have any time to hide their assets or take steps to avoid it. It could be done without exemptions so that it couldn't be exploited, but payments could still be deferred to avoid bankrupting asset-rich but cash-poor people, like poor pensioners in big houses. If it's credibly one-off, it also wouldn't affect future behaviour, unlike an annual tax, which would encourage people to either spend more or move their money offshore. But there are some apparent downsides. Some people see wealth taxes as a form of double taxation, given that wealth is usually accumulated by saving income. Although the UK already has taxes for specific forms of wealth, like capital gains tax, which we don't generally object to. Some people also think our tax system should be predictable, and one-off taxes aren't predictable. Although, again, it's worth mentioning that Thatcher levied a windfall tax on the banks in 1981, and Blair levied a windfall tax on private utilities in 1997. Perhaps the biggest issue, though, is that Labour doesn't have the mandate to do it. But, to be fair, because the tax relies on it being a surprise, it's not like they could put it in their manifesto. Now, the other policy that you guys often recommend in the comments is legalising cannabis for recreational use, and then taxing it. Proponents of this policy argue that a legal but regulated market would reduce harm amongst users, reduce the pressure on police forces, and there's even some data from the US that it would reduce alcohol intake, which would then reduce pressure on the NHS. However, whilst this might be a good policy in and of itself, it wouldn't raise anywhere near enough money. Estimates currently suggest it could raise a maximum of £3.5 billion a year if it was taxed at the same rate as tobacco. However, one policy that commenters don't talk about so often, but which could raise a lot of money, is by paying less to the Bank of England. In short, the government is currently paying the Bank of England somewhere between £20 and £30 billion a year, about the same size as Reeves' dreaded fiscal black hole. Basically, since the 2008 financial crash, the Bank of England has engaged in what's known as quantitative easing, commonly understood as printing money and lending it to the government. However, when the Bank of England prints this money, it doesn't lend it to the government directly. Instead, it uses that money to buy government bonds off big banks, like Lloyds and HSBC. Anyway, Lloyds or HSBC then use this metaphorically printed money as what's known as a reserve. Basically, they save it so that they have enough cash in the bank if anything goes wrong. 
which is something the Bank of England requires them to do in order to keep the system stable. The Bank of England then pays interest on these reserves at whatever the current interest rate is, so about 5% for the past year or so. Given the Bank of England has about £700 billion worth of reserves outstanding, this comes to around £35 billion. The bank makes about £14 billion of this £35 billion back because it earns about 2% interest on the £700 billion worth of government bonds it has instead, and then the Treasury compensates for the remaining £21 billion loss. This number will change and almost definitely fall over time, as the bank sells some of those government bonds back and interest rates and borrowing costs move around, but either way it's a lot of money. Now, most central banks don't pay as much interest on their own reserves. While there's some debate as to how much the Treasury could save if the Bank of England stopped doing this, it could plausibly be above £10 billion, and maybe more than 20 In practice, this would be a tax on the banks, who would be denied these massive interest payments, and some of this might be passed down to consumers in the form of lower savings rates and higher interest rates on loans. Although it's worth noting that high interest rates have meant massive profits for the big banks recently. Some people therefore suggest that Reeves would be better off just placing a windfall tax on the banks, but there's two caveats here. First, this policy just has more centrist vibes, which is what Labour are going for. And second, there's also an argument that this would improve central bank independence by getting rid of this awkward interaction between fiscal and monetary policy, where government spending is forced down when interest rates go up. Fans of TLDR like you care about understanding the world around them. That's where today's sponsor Imprint comes into play. If you care about building a life of learning, then Imprint is the app for you. It's a new way to learn that turns your phone from an attention-sucking device to a tool for growth. You may have heard this before, but unless you've used the app, you likely haven't experienced something like this. That's because Imprint is beautifully illustrated and animated, creating a highly visual, bite-sized and interactive learning experience. It's the perfect antidote to a world where social media tries to keep us mindlessly dopamine scrolling day in and day out. Their library includes courses on topics like psychology, history, philosophy, finance, productivity and many more, and quick reads you can consume in a single sitting. Since we last spoke to you about Imprint in September, I've done the philosophy course and am focusing on their course on the science of happiness. People study how to get in shape, how to eat right and how to advance in their career. Understanding how humans are wired to be happy has been an interesting path to go down that I highly recommend to all of you. So make yourself feel better about your screen time, build a real habit of learning every day and join the millions of people using Imprint. Plus, if you use the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen, the first 200 people will get 20% off an annual plan. Plus, they'll know that you came from us.